Okay. Um, I do want to just give a shout out. I know we'll talk about this during the show, but if you don't know, Vinny has a great podcast called Breakfast with Vinny. And it's really fantastic. And I, I encourage everybody, if you don't know about this, to subscribe to it. Um, it's, it's really great. It's, it's Vinny covers all sorts of, um, uh, you know, different topics and subjects on his podcasts. And they're all great. And they're all, you know, like 15, 20 minutes, you know, you can just listen to it while you're driving to work or having your breakfast, which is what I do. All right. So rather than push my luck um, with the internet connection that, and the power and all that, I'm not going to take up any more time. And with that, I'm going to welcome my very special guest, the most handsome man I know. The most handsome man I know. <laughs> oh, hi, John. <laughs> Oh, that, wait a second. Wait a second. Are you looking in the mirror? I'm just curious. Are you looking in the mirror? Handsome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'll tell you what, if I'm looking in the mirror, I'm, I'm seeing a really, really handsome guy. Easy. Yeah. Now people are going to start talking. They're going to start look, talking. You got to, they probably hit. already are. <laughs> I think they are. I think that it's so good to see you. You got to hit me to, to whatever you're using to get the music and the sound effects. Cause that the other day you were playing oh. some. Really oh yes. Fun. No, absolutely. Um, well, good to see you, John. <laughs> good to see you too, Vinny. <laughs> well, there's, there's various ways to do this, but, but, but I use this road, um, podcaster, which is a amazing device. I love it. Okay. Right, so, yeah. so yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and I just, <laughs> I mean, it's a funny thing, you know, it's a funny well, thing because I, I love, I mean, and I will talk about products here because, you know, I believe in what I use. So yeah, yeah yep. absolutely, man. I don't, you know, do that sort of thing, but um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, so how the hell are you? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Um, um, uh, I got my fingers crossed. We're going to have so far so good, good internet connection and all that stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. I know you guys are having a blizzard back there, right? Yeah, we're getting pounded pretty well. It's going to be maybe two feet when it's all said and done. Oh boy, I've I've got yeah. memories of a lot of memories of you know shoveling snow and uh, you know uh, believe me from from living back there. I mean, <laughs> one time. Uh, I mean, do you want to start or you want me to just carry on with this stupid little story here? No, we're starting. It's we're not starting. A story. So so yeah. yeah. So so once 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 I was uh, actually playing a gig. And it was in New Hampshire, if I remember correctly. So, so I drove up there and I had a little Volkswagen Beetle that I used to put all my drums in. So, uh, you know, I'm playing this gig and, and, uh, and, and at the end of the night, I mean, it was snowing. So I came out, I came out of the place and, and all I could see was the top, maybe about two inches of the top of the roof. And I just looked at it and I just thought, <sighs> okay, so like two in the morning, you know, I got to start shoveling snow just to get my drums in the car. Yeah. And oh my yeah, God. <laughs> those were, those were the days, my friend. So, so yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and then the car surprisingly just, just started right up. And oh, that's great. It was a great little car for the most part, but, but, you know, uh, yeah, I could go on and on with, with those stories. I mean, I mean, uh, so I don't, I definitely don't miss shoveling snow, you know, or the wind chill factor, but, but, um, but I, no. I'm, there's a lot of other stuff I, I kind of miss, you know, it, you know, like, isn't it funny when we were talking about this the other day, I was thinking how, like when, when we were younger, um, you wouldn't hesitate to go play a gig. You, knowing there was a forecast for it to snow, you'd, you, it did, you just go play your gig and you came out at the end of the night, your car was under, you know buried under snow and you just dug it out and drove home. It's, it's funny how it's the yep. stuff we did. Yeah. You know? It's amazing because like, you know, when you're young and, and, and you have all these other factors that go along with that, you know, the impetuousness or, or the sort of just, you know, feeling invulnerable and just having a lot of energy and you bounce back quick and, and, and you, you have, you have less time 
of lived experience on your timeline. So things are new and fresh and exciting. And, you know, you're at a point in your life where you're like, okay, well, I'm still, I'm, I, you know, I want to go somewhere with this. And so this is just, this is important to me. And because I love this and because, because I have a vision of where I'm going and where I'm striving to go, you know, it's, it's all fun. And, and then your friends are into the same thing. And so, you know, you want to be with your friends and who cares yeah. if it snows and, you know, we, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we'll just make snow angels. You know what I mean? So yeah. great, no problem, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> exactly. But, but, but then again, there's the flip side of like, I was saying what happened to me is like, I remember once I was driving back cause I lived in Boston for, for a while and then, and then I moved to the Cape. So, right. So I was living down the, on the Cape, you know, and it's a haul from, from Boston to the Cape. And so I yeah. was driving back from Boston to the Cape and, you know, more than once this happened. And once though, it was so bad that the car just died and I've just got my gig clothes out of the car and threw them over my back and just started walking. And it, and it might, I think it might've been on route six or, or maybe it was, I'm not sure if I went over the Sagamore bridge at that point. I think I was on the Cape at that point. Yeah. Pitch black, dark, not a peep middle of the winter. Oh, freezing. Oh, you man. know, two 30 yeah. in the morning. I don't know. Three in the morning. It was cold. And, 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 and I just started walking. I probably had at least 10 miles, 15 miles to walk. But I just walked and I thought, well, eventually there will be a car. And if I just keep walking, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll stay warm and something will happen or uh, who knows what I was thinking, but all of the above. And, 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 and eventually, actually, a car came by, you know, but before that happened, there was about 15 minutes of like pure darkness, you know, and kind of like eerie sounding little sounds coming from the side of the road, <laughs> you know, so I yeah, thought, yeah. You know, what's going to happen now? And there I am. And and then a car came by and I just stuck my thumb out and the guy stopped. Yeah. And I went, yeah. oh, great. You know, back in those days, people would do that stuff because yeah. you, you didn't have to worry about, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Things like you do now, you know, like, no, yeah. who, who in their right mind would do that, right? And so consequently, a part of the human spirit gets dampened and there's just everybody suspicious of everything about everybody. But, but the guy picked me up. And so there was this diner that was open 24 hours that, that I ended up going to cause I knew the guy and it was close to my house. <laughs> Went in there, warmed up. And yeah, I think maybe he gave me a bowl of soup or something and I got a ride home, you know? And then my car was like 10, 15 miles back on the road and I had, you know, get a towed or whatever. And, you know, another time, you know, <clears throat> I had to get a, I actually fashioned a coat hanger because the paddle, broke and i figured out that if i attached it to the carburetor uh through the yeah. window and fashioned a couple of coat hangers i could pull on the coat hanger which would affect the carburetor that would cause the car to accelerate so now instead of pressing on the gas pedal i'm tugging on the coat Ooh. hangers with one hand whilst shifting gears in the clutch and trying to steer with you know my elbow i you know stuff like that you know, in another time, my car broke down in the snow and, and like, I just tried to snuggle up and sleep and I couldn't because it was too cold. Oh. And, you know, the, you know, this is what happens when you're a starving student and you're, you know, you're playing these yeah. gigs. I mean, it's funny, right? You know, for like it is, it is top 40 gigs just to make a living, you know, and you just do whatever. And you're not thinking about, oh, I've got a really crappy car and it's not really reliable, but I can't afford much else, you know. Yeah. So I borrowed my cousin's car once, you know to do another gig. She had this big station wagon and, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I was like, I'm driving back and all of a sudden I, I saw this thing dart out in front of me and I, and I tried slamming on the brace and Ooh. brakes and just as it was getting to like my side of the car towards the edge of it, I heard this little thump and I freaked out and it looked like a deer. Oh. And so I freaked out really badly because I thought that I had, you know, really hurt this deer. And, you know, I was really upset about it because I love animals and, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I don't hunt. I don't do any of that stuff. So, um, but, but that's just me. Okay. So, so I stopped the car and looked around and I didn't, you know, I didn't see anything, but, but yeah, you know, I, you know, and I, I told my cousin about it and, and we you know, had a little, 
And I said, oh, your car's okay. Your car's okay. But, but it just, it's just, I just remember all these kind of follies, you know, like, um, yeah, yeah. That we were going yeah, through with the snow and the inclement weather, you know, the things I was going to say, you, you had me thinking about this from when we talked the other day about just, yeah, the, the weather and like my band originally had a gig scheduled for tonight. We, we canceled it a, a while ago, but yeah. I was just joking with my bandmates saying, you know, what time is load in tonight? We're, you know, we're going to have two feet of snow by, by six o'clock tonight. And it's tonight. It's, you're actually going to do this. <clears throat> no, no, we're not, we're not, we're not going to do the gig. No, we're, Oh, Oh, Okay. Yeah, no, but it's, uh, but it's, but it's, but years ago, we probably would have, you know what I mean? We right. would have, we would have gotten our cars and, and gone, oh, okay. yeah. yeah, well, of course. <laughs> and and, then, and yeah, and then there's, there's less venues. And now with this whole thing that's been going, people aren't, you know, if they show up, who knows? Right. right. You know, and, and right. And so, and the, the age of the audience, they might be going, oh, I'm going to stay home, you know? Right. Well, that's it. Exactly. That's a big part of it for us. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So, so Vinny, when you, <laughs> When you were, um, were, were you living here during the blizzard, not to talk about blizzards all day, but were you here for that big blizzard in 78? That's exactly yeah. when I left. Oh, oh, good for I you. I was here for the, yeah, I was in there for the the infamous blizzard of, of 1978. Yeah, so, February, yeah. Exactly, and um, I remember it well. And um, one of my roommates at the time, I was living in, in Alston, and we, there was a bunch of us in this house, you know, like eight of us in a six bedroom house. It was like animal house. Right. <laughs> and it was funny. So unfortunately he passed away a couple of years ago. He was a great guy, um, a bass player. And, um, anyway, before he passed away, we were reminiscing about that very thing. I went and visited him in the hospital. We were talking, so I'm chewing on a cough drop. Um, it just helps when you talk a lot, right? So, so he, he, he and I were talking and he, he said, you remember that blizzard? And I said, yeah. And, and, and he goes, remember how we had to climb out of the second story bedroom window down the snow bank and that they, the city was giving out these vouchers to go to the co-op. If you could get there, they would give you food. I was like, oh yeah. So we had to slide down go to the co-op, get the bags of food, and then somehow climb back up into the house because oh we, we were snowed in and it was that bad. I remember, I don't yeah. know if you remember this, but I remember, you remember the police on snowmobiles? I remember I, that because you couldn't yeah. drive anywhere. It was like yeah. four days of being locked in completely. Right. Couldn't right. go anywhere. I remember snow. that. Yeah. yeah. So basically wow. I just said, okay, this is it. I'm I'm done because at that point I was toying with going back and forth of where am I going to go to sort of continue this adventure? Am I going to go to New York or am I going to go to LA? Mm. So I was talking to my classmates. Some went to New York, some went to LA and then that happened. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go to LA. So I did it. And that's exactly what I, I ended up doing, but, but I, you know, I mean, I had very little money when yeah. I did it. So speaking of, you know, just taking chances, uh, I mean, I did exactly that. I had $80, a suitcase, and my drums in those fiber drum cases, which yeah. when yeah. they get wet, they kind of warp, you know. Yes. <clears throat> That's what I had, you know, hard rate case and it was clubbing. And, and so I took a Greyhound bus from Boston to Los Angeles, to Hollywood. And we stopped in Chicago and I had to, and I was like trying to sleep. And I remember I woke up and there was this limited amount of time where it was like, oh, I have to change buses. So now I had to take all my stuff off, my drums. And in Chicago, it was just as cold and, you know, snowing and trying to like get all my drums oh from my one gosh. bay to another bay, you know, in the snow and in my suitcase and hop back on the bus. And here, you know, you're, you're in these chairs, basically just, trying to sleep and just get there, yeah. you know, and, and, and yeah. And, and, and then I remember, you know, sort of going across the country and the landscape was changing and all of a sudden I'm in the wild, wild West now. Hey, you know, and uh, yeah, I just thought, wow, this is a trip. And, and I ended up in Hollywood and a friend of mine picked me up and said, you know, in a cab. Now, I had met him when, 
I was at the record plant Sausalito doing this record. So, you know, he, he was teching for a, a band called Captain Beyond. So I so I met him and we would befriended him, you know, and we became good friends and stuff. And then and then <laughs> so he picked me up, right? And <laughs> in a taxi. So we go to his little apartment. He had a studio apartment oh in, in the foothills close to the Hollywood Bowl. So yeah. he's picking me up with my <laughs> drums and stuff. And he's got a hot plate and there's just like a little mattress on the floor for me, right? That's it. Oh man. You know? And there was a wow. bathroom. You know, I mean it was just a little place. But we set the drums up. You know. Of course. Of course. <laughs> in his in his studio apartment. Yeah. We had drums. <laughs> and we played them. Uh, <laughs> when we when we felt like it. And guess what happened next? We got evicted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? That, yeah. That's what I'm oh. talking about. Oh man, that's I these See, are things I did not know. Huh? Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, you know. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. so that was like that was we should have our own like, show. Everybody has a show now. Hey, you know what we're all talk show hosts now. Hey, what do you think about me? I don't know. Do you like me? I like me. I like you better than me. Who's more popular, you or me? Oh, you're way more popular than me. Trust me. <laughs> How's this for my sort of, you know, game show host, media, yeah, yeah. media face, media face. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the serious kind of. Yeah, 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 exactly. He means business when he reports the news. He means right. business when he reads the headlines on his own podcast and just parrots and them. The uh, <laughs> the tagline is no BS. The no BS news. <laughs> uh, I've been so looking, was, you know, I've been looking, you know, towards you this whole time, and now I'm looking at the screen, and I'm seeing all these drums behind you, and I envy us. So, uh, well, I got that little drums. Thanks, buddy. I get that that star uh, set set I showed you the other day right there, but I wanted to set the Gretsch up for you, the white Gretsch. Well, and now for you're me talking. Too. Um. In, in your in your honor um, thank you yeah of course buddy but Those so are beautiful so, any, so, so wow thank you well anytime you're in the neighborhood please come and play them oh man as, as they as well you they know what i wanted to get back there but it didn't happen this past fall uh for various reasons but um and you know <clears throat> We wanted to drive back there. We were really looking forward to doing it. And then, you know, things happened and it, things got hairy and, and, yeah. um, they've been hairy, let's face it. But, but, uh, uh yeah, for, for whatever reason, but, but it would, it would be nice to sort of still do that when the weather breaks and just kind of make a little cross country trip out of it because, you know, I still have family back there. So I would love to, to see you and to see them and just to see friends that I haven't seen in so long. So it'd be so great. Yeah, please just have a, you know, a, a, some spare ribs ready for me and a salad and no, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have kidding. whatever you want ready. You know, oh, I'll be ready for you. You know, a cup, that. Of, cup of coffee. How about that? Absolutely. I, I have to read you Eddie Taduri, who we were just talking about the other day. Yes. Our dear friend. He couldn't, he couldn't make it to watch this live today, but I just want to read to you what he said. Hi, John. Sorry, I'll miss this, but please give Vinny my best. We played together recently at our annual trap benefit and it was mm -hmm. magic, which you were just talking about. And he said, he's always been there for me in the program. When people think of Vinny, they think drums and rightfully so, but I think of a lifelong friendship, kindness, and compassion. Isn't that beautiful? Eddie is a I saint. Eddie. Yeah. yeah, it is beautiful. He's, he's St. Eddie. And uh, what he's doing is doing God's work, man. He, yeah. This guy found a calling that's that's bigger than him, you know, and and all of us. And I have to tell you that what he's doing with those those children and with these people are is just miraculous. I mean, you know, yeah. initially he was also working with people. If my memory, which is ironic that I'm saying this now, is correct, that he was also working with people um, with adults that had Alzheimer's and and those kinds of issues, and was seeing great results. But but the focus actually ended up for reasons that Eddie could explain much better than I, uh, to, to kids with, with Williams syndrome. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're just, 
all I can say is, is, is Eddie, you know, doing this is, um, I mean, if, if, if anybody's going to have the gates of heaven wide open, it will be for him, you know, yeah. if yeah. karma will have a pot of gold, it will be for him, um, for doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so, but, but he's doing it selflessly as, as one should, you know, you, he's not doing it for a reward, but the thing is, is that those kids, they, to me, what I've learned, what I've learned from doing that and just being around them as it hit me is that they are our teachers mm-hmm. because they're all love. Yeah. They don't have yeah. the hate. F- their, their filter for hate is gone or whatever that thing is. It's not there. They don't know. They teach us how to love and how to live. So they're like, God put them, put them there to, t- to be our teachers. So it's like, you know, rather than looking at them as a sort of, um, as people with disabilities that, you know, to me, they're sort of, that's why we, we as a species, we do this, we interact, we love, we, we, they teach us, we help them and they help us. Yeah. It's a symbiotic yep. relationship, you know, that's very valuable. So, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, Absolutely. in the words of, of the fabled so-called words of Einstein, God doesn't make mistakes, you know? So, uh, you know, I don't want to misquote anybody here, but you get my drift. So I do. That's, that's well said, Vinny. Yeah. yeah. That's, 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 yeah. And, I, I, and I've, I've been there when I could, it. when I could, you know, I, there's been times where, I mean, I was there with the beginning and, I, and then I spent a lot of years on the road and missed many of them. And, uh, and, and just was able to come back and, and do this last one with him in, in Santa Barbara and at the theater. And it was, and the other thing too, is that it was so much fun playing. Eddie sounded great because yeah. Eddie, Eddie doesn't have, he didn't have an ego. Nobody had an ego. Nobody was there except for the reason of playing music, having fun and doing something for them. And yeah. that really, to me is the, the, the spirit of, of how it should be captured always, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That, yeah. Yep. I, I could I could see that about Eddie too, just because yeah. he's so he's so genuine, he's so human, you know. He really is, and so yeah. so it's the rhythmic arts uh, project trap. So yes. I'm yeah. not sure what the website is, but is it trap dot something com or I, org I think or, it might be trap dot com. Yeah, yeah, or dot org. But but the rhythmic arts project, you can find it, and uh, it's worth worth looking at to just you know to familiarize yourself with it and see what he does. So. I mean, it's a global thing now. So yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. fantastic. Got a lot of lot of folks watching, Vinny. A lot of great comments. Um, lots of questions, of course. Needless to say, but we're gonna we're just gonna keep moving here because we could we could spend all day and all night uh, doing that. But, oh, I know. Yeah. And you and I have a lot of stories to tell as well. So you know, and and you know what I was talking about before. What we we started to touch upon. I'm, I'm actually drafting another podcast episode of my own about that very thing um, that has to do with what you'll go through to get to where you're going to go and yeah, what, what are you willing to do? You know, and that sort of thing. So, um, and, and, and I'm going to do a shameless plug here. So, so, so that I hope that, that um, if people feel so inclined to please um, come and visit uh, my podcast that I have called breakfast with Vinny, which is hosted on its own website, uh, www.breakfastwithvinny.com, and um, on Podbean. Actually, Podbean is the real host for it. Um, so there's an app on the App Store, a Podbean app, and you know you could just download it and just join. And 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 it, you know, if if you follow me on Podbean, and if you sign up on, uh, like sign up on the on the list on on breakfastwithvinny.com, then. Um, then I can have a, a good gauge of, of, of who is with me. And, and, and also yeah. if there are any other kind of announcements of, or developments, I could let you know, but, but I don't spam people. I think I've probably sent one email out uh, the entire time that or maybe two. Um, and the last one was a holiday email and a thank you. So, so I don't do that sort of yeah. thing and exploit email addresses to spam people. But, but, but I also try to keep the, the episodes short because I don't want to monopolize people's time. There's so much content out there now. And, you know, some of these things where, you know, television shows typically are 30 minutes or an hour with a bunch of commercial breaks. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, but 
now you've got podcasts that, and I understand how conversations can develop. I get all that. Um, they go on for two or three hours, but, but really when you have so much, so many different types of things that you would perhaps want to listen to, yeah. you know, then how do you fit them all into a day? I mean, how can you follow, you know, 20 podcasts and listen to every episode that comes like you must have to have a podcast blaring in your ear 24 hours a day, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, Absolutely, it's just, yeah. so I just keep them <clears throat> Maybe, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Some of them are 10 minutes. Um, The interviews may go for an hour because, okay, in all fairness, we're just talking now. We're having a conversation and things come up and we go back and forth. But but we have a limit on it. And, and, you know, so so there. But, But please feel free to come and visit and tell people about it if you like it. It's topical. I, I paint in broad strokes. I don't talk about, you know... This is the lick of the month. <laughs> I made it up. You'll never need another one. Right. You, know? you know what I mean? I don't, it's, I, yeah, I yeah. don't, you know, I, I just, cause I think that, that, that really so much of, of life is principle based and sort of like, you know, I could learn as much from if I was astute enough, I could learn from somebody who really had their golf game together, even if I'm not a golfer, because we're dealing with economics, physics, common sense, application. Mm-hmm. There's a whole bunch of stuff, and it all, right. all kind of boils down to concept and context. That's where it begins and ends. It's everything flows from that. So, I mean, once and I probably said this before <clears throat> somewhere else. I'm sure because you know I'm an old old man now, and I repeat myself. <laughs> So why didn't I just say that, Johnny? No, no, I just, you know, that's me all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Boomer. (laughs) Oh, I'm so offended. Not. So um, is that the best you got? How gauche. (laughs) Boomer. Ooh, I got him there. Yeah. Ouch. (laughs) Okay. I'll stop. So, (laughs) ouch. So, um, but (laughs) I'm sorry. I got totally off base because I'm cracking no. myself up. No, so. you started to say you've said this before. Well, I don't know. See, see, I, you can see what I mean? I had dementia now. So. Uh, I, I do tend to repeat myself, but um, no, it's like, you know, uh, like I, I probably have said this a million times, but like I remember one time I went over to a friend of mine's house for a rehearsal and um, that's years ago years ago and so he's a great uh singer songwriter pianist and so walked into the house and there was a guy sitting on a piano bench next to a woman who was playing piano and he was just very intently sitting there staring forward and listening and watching and so i said oh let's go into the other room i don't want to i don't want to bother these people looks like he's giving a piano listen Oh, no, it's fine. It's okay. I said, wow, this looks pretty intense. Who is he? He told me about the guy. And the guy was apparently a really sought-after teacher that, you know, very accomplished and some renowned pianists and violinists studied with. He didn't play either instrument. No kidding. No kidding. Wow. They He just... He just, but he was it, that but... that good of a guide who could, you know, intuit, and he, he, yeah. you know what I mean. He just, he just knew, he just knew. It's like you know, and a lot of things happen like this tangentially, or um, with this kind of lateral approach, or lateral thinking, or lateral uh, trajectory. Where, whereby, you know, that's one example. A friend of mine was telling me about someone else he knew that was an Israeli pianist, and his teacher was a mathematician, or. Um, you know, uh, there's uh, what's another example? Um, that was on the tip of my tongue. Uh, anyway, uh, well, you get the That's picture, fascinating. So. Yeah, I do, yeah. Vinny. And that fascinates me because I. I've, oh, I'm so I've sorry. I just remembered it. No, that's okay. If, if I may interject, there was here, here's another one. So, so it is valuable to be an expert, 
but but the thing is, is that there's also people, there are also people who are experts, who may even have degrees that they're just, they're, they're, they're not imaginative or they don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen people who, who've had degrees that, you know, they couldn't, you know, you hear what their composition degrees and it sounded horrible or, and then other people who were like, well, you know, I'm struggling here, but I, I they write a song and it makes you weep and, you know, it's, it's the greatest thing you've ever heard. So what does it all mean? You know? So there was yeah. a guy years ago yeah. on, um, and there was an old episode of 60 minutes. So you can still probably see this if you, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Anyway, it's about this guy called John Kanzius, K-A-N-Z-I-U-S. And apparently the story goes is that he was suffering from some kind of cancer himself he went to a children's cancer ward or leukemia ward and um, was so touched by what he saw that he went back home and went through his wife's pots and pans and things and whatever they had around the house and, and came up with this apparatus called the Kansius machine. It was a prototype. And what he did was he was a radio operator, I think, or something in that capacity in the Navy, I think. And, in a branch of the armed forces, okay? He worked yeah, in radio you know. communications or something like that. So he wasn't a doctor. He wasn't, you know. So he puts this machine together. And apparently, I mean, I saw this where the, the, the interviewer was, he had it so that there was some kind of apparatus. There were two of them placed a distance apart. What he did was he, he hung a hot dog on a string with something stuck in the hot dog, like a little pebble or whatever it was. And he aimed radio waves at that, which destroyed that target area only and left the rest of the hot dog intact, uncooked. So the interviewer saw this and was astounded by it. So she said, can I walk between these two posts of apparatus machinery or whatever it is? Will it hurt me? He goes, certainly it's just radio waves. I mean, this is a real thing. This is not some baloney tinfoil yeah. hat crap. This is yeah, yeah, really yeah. happened, right? So this guy, and I mean, I followed this for years. I mean, there was a website where you know they had the patent on it, and they were waiting for FDA approval for years, for years. Okay, and and I saw another interview with someone that was a oncologist. Um, oh, this is the greatest thing, the biggest breakthrough in. You know, we, we can envision a time where we put nanoparticles through the entire body and this thing only targets where the nanoparticles go and leaves everything else alone. This is brilliant. You can guess what happened next. A bunch of nothing. Yeah. Right? They waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. That's a good song there. And while the FDA dragged their feet and, you know, nothing happened and then suddenly... All of a sudden, the next thing I knew, the patent had been sold to someone else, and then a different kind of version of the machine emerged, I think, I think. But but it just goes to show you how how the whole thing just kind of fizzled out. But but the main point of it all is that the guy, he was a radio operator. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't right. he he wasn't a he wasn't an oncologist, but right, he thought right. laterally and he came up. I mean, how many people, can you imagine? Wow. I'm sure there are kids who in eighth grade science classes who have tried to figure out, I've already figured out the most efficient way to get rid of microplastics. I'll bet you, I'll bet you there are. And in fact, I think I remember reading something about this. So you're getting my overriding point that I'm trying to make, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you don't have to be, yeah. You, you don't yeah, have to just, be. Look at kids playing in buckets on the street, and then they, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you either got something to say or you don't. It's yeah. it's that simple, you know. And and as much as you know, I appreciate you know mankind's capacity for intellect and all that sort of stuff. You know, to me, it's if you ain't got heart with it, you ain't got nothing. You know, I'll take heart over that. I, you know, I'd rather hang out yeah. with people who you know, have one tooth in the front that will give me that, you know, one of their last pieces of bread, then some smug intelligentsia person telling, you know, well, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I, I take issue with that. You know, you know, that's sort yeah, of, yeah. you know, I, I just. Absolutely. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. Kind of yep. puts a bad taste in my mouth, you know. 
unlike this cough drop, which was really, really good. So they look good. I'm a little, yeah. I'm a little jealous of those cough drops. I'm drinking water trying to you know, stay. I don't know where my wife got them, but they're, I got to ask her. They're so good. They're, <laughs> they're like licorice. They're called Jakeman's Jakeman's cough Jake, drops. Jake, really good. Okay. And, and Mim is watching this. You said she's watching us right now. Well, I hope she is. Yeah, I oh, think good, so. Good, good, uh, good. I told her it would be on Facebook. So, yeah. you know, and that's the one social media platform I know nothing about. I don't know how to operate it. You know, I have an administrator that, that, that works on my page yeah. for me. So, you know, I know how to, you know, use Twitter and Instagram. That's about it. So you're not missing anything. Vinny. <laughs> I mean, th th this is, this is great that we're, we're reaching all these folks right now, but, yeah. um, but it's, yeah, it's uh, with all due respect to everybody watching. What I meant was just, yeah, you know, it has, its it definitely has its ups and downs, but, but talking yeah. about, um, I want to just jump backwards for 10 seconds because you, you back, told me something, <laughs> jump back to something that I thought was funny the other day um, when you, you, while you were still here in Boston and you were at Berkeley and your classmate, Kenwood Denard, the great Kenwood Denard, yes. who's still here. Yep. Still, he's teaching great. at Berkeley, as we know, uh, oh. Woody, and that you guys were at a Bernard Purdy clinic at my old EU Wurlitzer place of work. Yeah. And both of you guys got up and played during the clinic as Berkeley yeah. students. We That's, did. Yeah. And Bernard asked us to come up and we went up and played. And, I, you know, I mean, I would normally not do something like that unless I was asked and, and sometimes I would balk, but, but this time I did. And so did Kenwood and Kenwood and I used to hang out and practice together. I think we, we had the same dorm dormitory floor. So we went to school together and there was uh, a lot of people going to uh, school at that time. I think at the schools, yeah. you know, a, a, any, any university or college usually has a gilded age or several of them where there are some class years where, there's just a bunch of luminaries that emerge at, at one time, you know, or, and, yeah. uh, and, and I, and, and I think the mid seventies was one of those times that I was lucky enough to, to, to be at, at that time. Like, I mean, there was myself and Steve Smith were there and John Robinson and Ken Wood, uh, Mike Stern, um, a whole yeah. bunch of people, the late Chuck Loeb, may he rest in peace. Um, yeah. so yeah. many, you know, a great, that went on to do great things. And, and uh, Pat Matheny was even teaching there at the time still. Wow. And, um, yeah. and, you know, Gary Burton was there and Steve Swallow and have ensembles with these people. And it was a great time to be there, you know, and, yeah, and the absolutely. people that, that I networked with and met while I was there and just sort of got to meet and play with. And that whole immersive social experience of interacting with other musicians was the whole, that was the, the kind of, I don't know that the, 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 the the sort of nexus of it, you know, it was, it, it really was the thing that, um, that made it for me, you know, just because you can, you can, when you communicate with people, you find out a lot about yourself. That's not just theoretical, you know? Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. And I was just going to say how cool that when you moved to LA, you know, a few years later, um, I know Tim Landers and Neil Steubenhaus were, were, in that during that time that's right well. and tim too yeah. and and neil yeah. i think neil was even teaching there you know and and wow, tim okay. was there yeah they were you know all these people there was, was you know philippe sace he yeah. was there yeah. at that time uh all yeah. these great like, musicians that you oh know yeah that. it was amazing and they yeah. went on to do great things so yeah i mean and, you know you contrast that with another time uh he's <laughs> talking about like you know bernard asked us to come up and play, you know, so, which normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, but, but, but he did ask me to do that another time when I was on the road and he came to a gig that I was at. And, and I think it was at the spectrum in Oslo. And I looked over by the sound, uh, the monitor booth and, and I saw this guy standing there and I'm thinking, well, it looks like Bernard Purdy. What's he doing here? You know? So, so the gig ends and he's still standing there and I'm walking off the stage. I go past him and, and he said, I said, Bernard, what are you doing? He goes, yeah, I got a clinic over at this club, you know, and I, I knew where it was. Right. I said, okay, I'll come over. So I go over there and, and, uh, and you know, he, 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 at that time, Slingeland made a brief comeback, right. That yes. was during that yeah. time. Yeah. And, and, um, 
So, so I go there and, and nobody's asking him anything. I'm sitting in the audience and I felt so bad. Right. I'm like, is it a language barrier? What is it? You know? Yeah. And then I, you know, raised my hand and asked him something and broke the ice. And so, and so he says, come on up on stage and play. And I'm thinking, Oh Lord, I didn't want this. Right. So, so I ended up, you know, trying to comp for him or I don't, you know, I was just sort of trying to stay out <laughs> of it, but, you know, but, but, you know, it happened once again and, and, you know, oh. God, I mean, the other thing too is, is that, you know, for me, it's like the guy's pocket is so amazing that it's like when, when Steve and Frosty and I went to take a le lesson, right? Oh, we're going to go to New York and take lessons from Bernard. So we go to New York. I took one lesson, right? At the end of the lesson, he goes, I want you guys to come back next week and, and you know, write an essay on what you learned. So we're standing on the street in New York after we left the lesson. And I said to Steve and Frosty, I said, I'm not coming back. He's like, Why? I said, I got everything I needed. You know why? Because during the lesson, at one point, he goes, I want all three of you guys to sit down and play a groove. We did what we thought was a groove. Mm -hmm. He sat down, and I was right behind him and started playing a groove. And let me tell you, man, it was like a hammer hit me over the head. I, 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 I just thought, you can't teach this, man. You, you either get it or you, you don't. This guy is so funky. So I'm thinking, I get it, you know? So, so, uh, so that was it. That was like another That's epiphany, cool. yeah. epiphany moment yeah. for me because of Bernard. Right. And uh, so, so, so that was the end of that, you know, so I didn't, so I didn't go back because I, I that's the reason, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. it just so happened in one fell swoop. Right. And um, so, so, you know, that's just kind of goes along with the whole thing of, you know, well, they ask you to sit in and, but there've been other times where I just wouldn't do it. Like the, the late Kenny Kirk, great Kenny Kirkland. Mm. Um, and I went, we went to, you know, I can't remember where it was in London. It was a club in London once. And we were there on the road together and Kenny and I, we went there because this group called Irakere was playing amazing Cuban group. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah everybody knows you know, Irakere, right. You know, Chucho. And, I mean, come on. So, Chucho was there. And so, <laughs> you know, they were like, they were looking for us to come up and sit in. And I went, Oh no, I can't, I don't want to do this. And so I tried to hide. So we were trying to hide in the men's room and, and went downstairs and there was a coat room there. And then eventually tried to snake up in the audience and the guy sees us and he sees me and he grabs me. And next thing you know, we're on the stage. Like they were not going to stop until we sat in. And I just oh. went, oh no, you know, and, and, and at that time we were, you know, we had a few of, of these, we imbibed a bit, yeah. shall we yeah. say back in those days. So by the time we got there, we were, you know, we we're kind of happy. So, um, yeah, it was a night off and yeah, yeah you, were, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we went there and, and now we're thrust in, you know, in the frying pan, feeling kind of happy but scared and and so you know and then they counted he counts it off and it's like one 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 you know oh. and I'm, yeah. yeah we're like thanks you know oh man nice so it was like well what do you do like, ah, you know sink or swim so yeah but but yeah so i would avoid it at all costs and uh and, and, and I think, and I think that, you know, that, 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 you know, the spirit of those guys was just like, oh yeah, man, you guys are cool. We love you. Come on up here. They wasn't like, like they were trying to challenge us. I think they just got excited, you know, and, and that's an honor for me, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Cause they're amazing. So. That's great. That is great. Yeah. Great. I mean. And then I'm I wrote. <laughs> I was going to say I've known you forever, and I've, some of these these stories I've never heard are just outstanding. They're just well, there goes that book idea out the window. No, 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 it won't go out the window. No, there's plenty more. I promise. We won't. We won't dig. I have three pages left. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, I'm I'm jockeying for a show. You can see I'm volleying for a show. I, I was talking about your show before you I'm came telling. on, so I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you promoted it as well and, and i no, and, i'm just i'm saying i know i'm jockeying for a show hey a show. it's hey. vinny day how are you <laughs> actually next saturday folks really is vinny day Whoa, February the 5th. is it coming up it's coming up a week from today 
Holy cow, I forgot about that. It's a week away. A week away. And I'll I tell just, everybody who doesn't know this, that you share the same birthday with our dear friend, the great Hal Blaine. And uh, I remember, I just want to tell this story. Three years ago, I was fortunate to be invited to Hal's 90th birthday party at the Baked Potato. You were out of town, Vinny, and you were, I know you were disappointed you couldn't be there. And you sent a beautiful, you texted me a beautiful voice message that I was able to play to Hal before it got crazy and put it up. And he just sat there smiling and, and he said, oh, that's, oh, please tell him I said, thank you. That's just beautiful. You know, it was, so that was, that was so beautiful that you remember that it was, well, I guess when you share the same birthday, it's easy to remember, but that was really nice that you did that. It was a beautiful gesture. Oh, thank you. Yeah. He, I mean, you know, the fact that I shared a birthday with him is, was huge to me. I mean, he's um, just iconic, legendary, incomparable Hal Blaine. I mean, he's uh, someone that, that, you know, I grew up listening to and, and, yeah. and, 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 and still do, you know, and, and just, um, you know, he used to, he used to, um, to email me occasionally and say happy birthday or we would send emails back and forth and you know wow. wish each other happy birthday yeah so so um that's cool i try to keep track of people that that i share birthdays with and and you know people who have birthdays close to mine i mean you know uh uh simons is on the sixth if i remember correctly you know that's right so, yeah so, yep yeah yeah the day after mm -hmm. yeah so we have to oftentimes remind ourselves to, you know, and, and, and I'm, and I'm not really great with birthdays. I have to sort of put them in, in, in my contact thing. So it shows up because, you know, uh, I mean, I'm just horrible with birthdays. I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, it took me years to even remember my own mother's birthday because it, it fell so close to Thanksgiving and it was like the 25th, you know, and I couldn't remember 24, 25, just, I don't know why I couldn't remember, but, but eventually I did. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not like I missed them, you know, I did, you know, but, yeah, but, yeah. but I, if I had to remember, but, but it's interesting speaking of that, it's like, I remember so many things like my, my, my childhood phone number. And back then, I could remember hundreds of phone numbers, you know, right. now, I mean, and it's not just an age related thing. I think it's just being used to sort of having everything in the phone and stuff, you know? So, yeah, I and, totally and agree. Yeah, yeah. You know, and if, and if it gets wiped, you panic, you know, cause everything's in the phone. So, yeah, I was, I was funny. I was not long ago. I was texting with a buddy of mine, childhood, you know, first grade buddy of mine that I'm still in touch with. And, and uh, we were, we were remembering each other's phone numbers, you know, you know, just like you said, like, and we, and other friends of ours, I said, it wasn't Dennis's number, this and blah, but I couldn't, um, there's so, I, I don't even know if I know Kelly's number, cell, cell number. I mean, I, I think I do, but I, I you know, but it's one of those things where if I think too hard about it, I go, no, maybe that's not it, you know, <laughs> yeah, but, right, right, right. right. No, but, but it's, crazy. it's, um, so, so talking about childhood though, I know, I know, John Bonham, like just talking about like your heroes coming up as a drummer. Um, Ringo was a big influence though, kind of in the beginning, right? Huge, huge. In huge. fact, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I saw him when I was very, very young on the Ed Sullivan show with the Beatles and I wanted a drum set just like his and I, and nobody had them in stock because apparently, you know, once that happened, like we couldn't make them fast enough. So there was a local music store, I ended up getting this Rogers kit that was this sort of Onyx Tiger, I don't know, psychedelic yeah. red sort of, you know, and, and, and they were great, great drums. And, and, you know, in fact, I think they were uh, that those drums at that time, pre CBS Rogers were, we had Jasper shells, if I'm not mistaken. So I think you are correct. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were yeah. really good. They were good, really good drums and, you know, yeah. the uh, swivel matic, I think it was. And, power tones and dinosonic i had a power tone snare uh but but yeah they were great and and um and and that's how that happened but ringo um was definitely you know one of my very very early early i mean you know after starting to pay attention to drummers and seeing them visually right ringo was probably maybe the first um and you know and then people came up and it was like brit pop and motown and soul it was mm. kind of you know really uh, what 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 I was influenced by in those early days, you know, like listening to all the, all the 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 
all the Motown drummers and the soul soul drummers and and uh, and 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 the and the rock and roll stuff. Like I mean, you know, the Beatles and the Stones and and you know whoever else the zombies you know yeah yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. argent dave clark five you know i mean all yeah. these people and and um and and then eventually as as i started learning more i, I got uh exposed to 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 jazz and 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 and, and i say that you know i mean i don't mean to, to say that tongue-in-cheek but but I got exposed to big band jazz and, and back where I grew up in, in, in Southwestern Pennsylvania, organ groups were really big, mm. you know, and where it was like organ players and, you know, it'd be like maybe organ player, drummer and a tenor player, you know, um, it'd be that kind of a situation. And, and then, then I got exposed to, to miles yeah. that kind of changed yeah. everything. So yeah. it definitely, it definitely didn't kind of, it definitely changed everything. And so did Tony, um, but, but, you know, I was able to see all these people when I was still a kid in junior high school, you know, right. like the Don Ellis big band, you know, playing Bulgarian bulge, you know, wow. I'm, I'm just this kid in like seventh, eighth grade and I'm seeing this stuff and it's all coming at me. And I've, this is nothing I've said before. It was like a tsunami of, of, you know, seminal music that was being born and, you know, from you know, infusion and, and jazz rock is what it was first before it was named fusion. And then fusion became something else and, and smooth jazz was born. But, but before all of that, it was, you know, all these kinds of things were coming and it was all really, you know, kind of new. I mean, everything from Mahavishnu, weather report, tower power, Don Ellis, big band, right. You know, and, 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 and a million other of that Jones, Bell Lewis, uh, you know, but then, then the rock groups, you know, I mean, yes. Um, King Crimson, yeah, Emerson yeah. and Palmer, that contingency, as well as Led Zeppelin. Um, I mean, I saw a Zeppelin. I saw a lot of those bands live, you know, and and the horn bands, Blood, Sweat, and Tears in Chicago, and so and so on and so on and so on, and Stevie Wonder, and you know, all of this stuff, and Miles and Hendrix, and yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, so people yeah, people yeah. will argue and say, oh, well, there was a lot of crap back then too, yo. Know? But but. Yeah, I mean, there's always been crap as long as yeah. things could be commercialized. But I would argue that the ratio of it, I mean, I oh. remember putting on AM radio and hearing Miles in San Francisco. I had a car, rented a car once. And just, you know, I can, yes, I know that 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 a lot of jazz stations, as far back as I can remember as well, would wait till after hours before they put on, you know, Sun Ra or you know, interstellar space or, or, you know, or any of this stuff, you know, um, or train or anything. And before that, it was like, oh, let's just keep it nice and easy, everybody. But there was still a, a, a plethora of, of, uh, of variety and qualitatively, qualitatively, it had its own kind of originality and integrity that, that still holds you know, and, and I think a lot of it also is because it, it, there was, there was a, um, uh, like a sort of, um, a, an air of more of an air of kind of permanence. Like you were documenting something, mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Versus like everything is everywhere now, which it's great to have that. And some people will, will say, well, it's up to you to find it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. But you know, sometimes it's like, it's like looking through this miasma of, of just, it's, it's like it's just this tidal wave of stuff. And sometimes you just go, you know what? No, you yeah. know, don't, yeah. don't just no, because it just becomes harder and harder to, you know, you're stumbling across things then, you know, I yeah. think so. And, you know, I, I just think that, yeah, yeah. There's this whole thing of, you know, I, recording was more of a rarefied air and, and with all the kind of things that we can do now, it's, you know, it's, you, you could, I think it's good to be able to reflect on that, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's all. That's all I'm saying. I think, you know? I think what you just said though, Vinny is so key. And I, and I so agree with the fact that it, it was, the music was documented and I, I, and I, yeah. I, I know I sound like I'm, I'm, you know, get off my lawn, but I just, yeah. I just feel like so little music right now is, is going to be documented the way that, and I, I would also, to your point, say that, if I, th the, the time period you're talking about when you were like junior high school, you're talking like sort of late sixties, right? Maybe late sixties, uh, early seventies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would, I think we'd both be hard pressed to, to really come up with some um, 
crap music. I mean, what, what people might have thought of as crap might have been some of the pop music that was, you know, that's... But even then, I mean, I could turn on the radio, there would just be hit after hit after hit. Yeah. There was a lot of really good stuff. Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't yeah. it it's, wasn't like I, the crap to good music ratio was a lot different, I think. You know? I totally, the, the good music far, far, far outweighed it, it w without a doubt. You, and, yeah, and, and you, you, yeah, and, yeah, and even the corporate machinery, even though it was f firmly in place, I don't think that it was completely, um, you know, as, you know, I mean, and this may have been in the early days of payola or maybe just before, who knows, but, but, but I just don't think that it was exerting as much direct power as it does now. I mean, the media is out yeah. of control. The media is like a, it's just like its own government now. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yep. It's just weird. It's like they're exerting their own kinds of rules, circumventing, you know, the, the, the law of the land. It's just bizarre to me, you know, but, but there was a lot of great stuff and, and, and I'm, yeah. I'm really, really happy that, that I saw it on the ground floor, you know, it was just, oh, absolutely. Great. No, I, I'm, I'm a little younger, but I, I agree. I say that all the time that we grew up at a time when like all these greats were walking the earth, you know what I mean? Like we got to hear it while it was being made, all that music, you know, and, and, uh, and there was a lot that I missed even, I mean, I would hear it like, uh, like, you know, that's why I would love to hear a story. I would, t you know, ask people like Herbie, you know, all these stories, because then there was that, you know, um, yeah, yeah. like, wow, you saw Bill Evans, you know, you saw train. <sighs> what was that right. like? You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I missed Hendrix. I missed train. I mean, you know, so, so there's yeah. some stuff that I missed that, boy, I can only imagine. Right. You know, so. Yeah. But you got to see a lot. I mean, you know, you got to see Led Zeppelin. You got to see a lot of great, yeah, a lot of great music. Uh, yeah. So, so, so jumping, I was going to just jump back, jump back, baby. <laughs> to uh, When you moved to LA in 78, yeah. um, how, how, how quickly did you, um, start to i don't want to say start to work but it did you did you audition for frank in 78 or was that 79 like joe's garage no record i want to say you know i roughed it for about three or four months pretty badly yeah and then i auditioned for him and i i recall i recall the summer of 78 starting to okay rehearse. that's what i thought so yeah, it's like okay. february yeah february march april may june you know it's like who's by like I mean, yeah, there was a, at least a good four months where it was it was it was kind of rough, bro. You know, I'm talking about yeah. sleeping in my car that I bought for ninety nine bucks. You know, and 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 then you know getting woken up by police saying you can't you can't. You know, I would find these little streets to pull over that were dark and I'd just try to go to sleep in this car. Oh man, you know, and and yeah, and and then I'd get woken up with the flashlight. I'm like, okay, come on, man, where do I have to go to sleep here? You know, and just. Things yeah, like that. Yeah. So I'm yeah. look. I'm, this is not a sob story because I was very very no, lucky. But this uh, is real life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real yeah. life. It's just things that happen. And you know, there's people with a lot worse. I got nothing to complain about. You know, we've got a homeless yeah. problem in LA now that's out of control, and probably a lot of it has to do with mental illness. So it's like fix that, help these people, and many of them don't want to be helped. They they just you know you gotta you gotta approach with caution, but. But, but, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that have it a lot worse, but, but, but I got a little taste of what it's like to, you know, not have a gig and crash around and just, you know, eat once a day, you know? So, uh, you know, where, where it's just like, uh, okay, I'm going to get a, a happy meal now. That's it. And I need the other five bucks for gas, you know? So, yeah. And yeah. yeah. So, so it, uh, yeah, I roughed it for about, I don't know, four months or something. And, and then. I heard about this, you know, I was crashing with people and I heard about the audition and, and I, I, you know, luck favored me. And and as far as the audition, were you, did you have to submit something to, to get to that point where Frank, no, I just happened and, to be, I just happened to pick up the phone at this place I was crashing at because I got a phone number from, from Tom Fowler for the management. I called them up. And they're like, go away, kid. And then, you know, one day I happened to be there doing, and this is before answering machines. That's how old I am. Okay. So the phone rang and I just happened to be there and I picked it up. They said, the real deadpan. Hello, it's just so-and-so, you know, yeah. Mr. Zappa will hear you Tuesday night. Culver City Studios, 7 p.m. Click. Or it was like that. So I showed up and it was like a cattle call. I mean, literally. Yeah big movie studio and there's like probably three lines 
hundred deep, you know, <laughs> and yeah, and that's what it looked like. And and you know, I walked up there, and finally I got towards the head end of the, you know front of the line, and I was just like, uh, here I go, sink or swim, and um, and and just you know, you went through the laundry list with him, and 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 I got hired. So, yeah. you you're being way too humble because it's a it's yeah. a it's a classic legendary story you had to play on terry's kit right his roto yeah kit. yeah he that's double bass gretsch kit black uh kid oh, and, right. I, and i had never yeah. played double bass before so i was like well you know <laughs> and, and, you know and i did but but it was great i was like oh gretsch drums yeah you know so <laughs> they're, but they're gretsch yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah. so yeah oh, and, and and then great. the laundry list happened you know and it's like uh and and yeah and so so it was yeah it was it was really very, very grueling and, and, you know, meticulous audition, you know, where it was all these categorical things he wanted to make sure that they could be fulfilled. And whether or not he was looking for all of them or a high percentage of them to be mm -hmm. filled, I, I don't know. But but I must have ticked all the boxes. So, you know, that's, that's lucky me. So, um, yeah, yeah, you know. I, I think you did, Vinny. I think you did. <laughs> There's... <laughs> yeah. yeah and so so you know and the gear thing too is like you know and and i ended up where i am now has talking about the drummers that that influenced me and and then you know uh i mean i ended up after those rogers drums i had this like see-through pearl kit that i ended up taking to boston with me and and then it was like no, i gotta get some i gotta get these gretsch drums and i saved up and went and, and bought those drums from from frank ippolito may he rest in peace right yeah, you yeah. Remember, remember Pro Percussion Center? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that was yeah. a yellow yellow Gretsch kit. Yep, yep, that yep. I still have to this day. So, yep. Yep. Can so be that was those, on. yeah, yep. man. And, uh, and, and you know, I've, I mean, going through all these iterations of gear, I don't know if you want to get into that here a little bit or not, or if this sure, is. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. the iterations of, of gear. And so so I ended up where I am now. And so, so as I say, I, you know, uh, I'm just very – like I play what I want to play, you know, and what, what works for me. So, yeah. uh, and, and what I love and, and, and it just so happens that choosing those drums because, because my heroes play them was not on, that wasn't the only uh, criteria, you know, it was because they sounded great and they feel great to play, you know? And, exactly. and so, so, so all the stuff that I use is, is for that reason, you know, and, and I've got my whole pedal thing with DW and like, like many of us do for good reason. And, and the hardware thing is together and, and, and I'm, and I'm playing the Peisty symbols now, which I love. Um, and, 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 you know, I've got a battery of different snare drums. And so, so, so the last thing left is the sticks that I've been sort of in free fall over the last few years, but that's coming. That's mm. coming soon. So that's all I can say. It's on its okay. way. All right. All right. Yeah. Someone asked that yeah, question yeah. and I wasn't, they've said, Hey, what's Vinny using for sticks? And I, I wasn't even going to go there, but I guess we'll wait and see. We're going to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. When, when I saw you play last a couple of years ago, you were in town with, with Jeff Beck and I brought my brother, my brother, Chris, to see you. I don't know if you oh, it was a really hot summer night and you absolutely killed it. And, and you were trying Thank some you. sticks and I won't say what, but you, I remember you saying to me, Johnny, was it, did it sound like typical Vinny? You said, did it seem like I, I had some different sticks up there? I said, Vinny, you sounded like you. You sounded amazing. <laughs> no, but you, you were, I know you were, funny. you were putting them through the paces. So, yeah, because they're just on the search and stuff. And, you know, you get yeah. used to something and it's sometimes it's hard. It, it gets, it's difficult, you know, to, it's, it's amazing what gets ingrained in your memory. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I went yeah. through the same thing with pedals, you know, it's like, uh, five thousands or nine thousands. And, and, uh, you know, you'd be amazed that uh, there's been few of uh, several of my friends have told me the same thing. And I was like, well, yeah, you know, I, I went through that too. I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. And, and I think it comes from the fact that, that I came from, from, a, you know, from pedals that had straps. Yes. You know, and I got yeah. so used to that kind of feedback that exact kind of feedback, even if the straps broke, I didn't care. I just took a drum key, took the strap off, put a new one on, boom, you know, and, and it yep. just had a certain kind of feel and, and it just took forever to get used to anything else. Like the chain had to be just right. And the, 
the sort of, you know, the adjustment had to be just right, just so you could get the right amount of resistance with for a nanosecond before yeah. the pedal yeah. actually went and how, how much spring back would it be and and all of that stuff and and it's it's amazing what 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 you can get used to that your body just hangs on to i mean i you know to me anyway and 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 i yeah. and i think a lot of other people have said the same thing you know so are you are you using five thousands now yeah. it's nine thousands nine thousands okay yeah. and with yeah. with a strap or with a chain you know, they're, they're, they're with this chain because the nylon strap okay. thing was like, it was too light for me, you know? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried those nine thousands and they, for, for my weak foot, um, I just couldn't, I was so used to the feeling of an old Gretsch slash old 5,000, um, pedal. Those are great. Yeah. Just, Floating it, action. Yeah. 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 I've got a bunch of those. Great pedal. Yeah. If you want one, I'll send you one. Oh, some, you know what? I, 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 I found I'm one. Send you one. Okay, I'll Happy I'll birthday. take it. Yeah. Oh, I accept it with gratitude. Good. I found one, but it's not completely working, and uh, I, I found it somewhere for like thirty bucks or something. But I but I have it here at the house, and and I thought, well, maybe I'll see if Chris, if Chris Hero will fix it for me, you know. And I I haven't gotten around to it, you know. Oh, but but I, I love, love that. I was like, oh, I would love to have one of those, man. So thank you. You got it, Vinny. Hold it, thing. I know. I know. We're getting we're getting on here, and I and and I, I was just gonna. We'll wrap it up in a minute. I just wanted to talk quickly about after you got the gig with Frank, was that more or less a turning point that really kind of from that point on, it really opened a lot of doors. I'm, I'm going to. Yeah, gonna, it did I'm because, say, because yeah. people had, had an idea rightfully so that, wow, you know, if you're playing with Frank Zappa's band, you have to be a, a pretty damn good musician because there were, I mean, look at the people that come out of there, you know, so, um, and, and Absolutely. the criteria and I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, but, but what happened was, is that I was on the road most of the time. And then when I'd come back in town for brief intervals, you know, I, 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 I wasn't like, I, I wanted to do, nobody really knew how I was that I wasn't doing any recording and I wanted to do that Yeah, yeah. because one of the things that that I wanted to do was be a studio musician for several reasons. Um, you know, not, not the least of which is I'd rather be, have, I'd rather be heard than seen, you know, I'm, I'm, that's just me. I just want to play the music. I don't even care. Like if, if I looked like, uh, you know, like Shrek, you know, who cares, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, like, I don't care. I don't want cameras on me all the time. Like, we, <laughs> you know, look, 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 look. You know, I just, I didn't care about any of that. In yeah. fact, I still think it's kind of like, really, why? You know, why do you have to, why do you have to, why? You know, just like if you read a book, you're using your imagination. Or if you just listen to a record, you're using your imagination. Why does everything have to be a movie? You know, um, that's yeah. just me, but whatever. Call me old fashioned, call me an old fart, whatever. But, but, but I think, you know, I, Yes, yeah, so I wanted to record, you know, and and I wanted to document music, and it was because being a studio musician, you was like you you didn't know what you were going to be involved in, and since I liked all kinds of music, I thought, great man, this is great, and I was listening to people that influenced me that were doing just that, like like Steve Gad and yeah. and Harvey yeah. Mason, you know, they were playing on like Harvey played on Headhunters, but he played on Brothers Johnson too and he played on George Benson Breezin and you know, and Gad, I mean Gad played on like The Hustle, you know, right. which right. was yeah. a really early like pre like beginning of the disco era, but then he did Steps Ahead and then he did The Leprechaun. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And yeah. He, yeah. yeah, right. So so I'm he, and and he, Billy used to do all these CTI records and and so these this whole thing of being a studio musician was like wow, you know, you're recording and you got to get it right and you're documenting it forever. There's that thing again. There's that thing that we were talking about earlier where you're documenting this is this means something because you're going to this is how it's going to sound for all time. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, yeah. we'll take the masters and remix them and then get rid of the drums. And, you know, we got this app now that'll get rid of the vocals and, you know, <laughs> no, they will auto tune it and we, we place it. And I, I got an idea. I'll do it, too. You know, and, you know, and everybody's got a big idea. And then, you know, it turns into 2000 different things. It wasn't like that. It was like you know, you, you, you had to get it right. And it was a performance top to bottom and, you know, things yeah. would be yeah. changed because you now you're in the second verse. And at this time, the story changes. So you're going to play it a little different. Whoops. How about that? Wow. What a concept. You're actually following a story 
you know, and, and so there's all those things, um, you know, and, and, and that's what I wanted to do, you know, and, and, but, but I had to leave in order to have that happen because there wasn't enough time in between tours. I, I, you know, I couldn't. So what happened was my last concert that I did with him was December, 1980 at the Santa Monica civic. And, and so in 81, we were starting to rehearse for another tour and I remember it was in between bass players and, and he was trying to get people out. And then I got an offer to do two records at the same time. Oh, um, Gino yeah. Vanelli, Nightwalker, and this group called Pages. So what happened was it would, and I thought, this is great. This will give me a chance to do recording and maybe who knows. And it was like a month of, of employment. So I went mm. to Frank and I said, Frank, you know, I really want to do this. And, and I, I'm, I'm really wanting to, you know, I explained the whole thing and he was totally understanding about it. He really, he gave me his blessing. He was wonderful. So that's what I ended up doing. And as we were doing like uh driving from, from the studio called smoke tree uh, during the day in Chatsworth, I think it was uh, doing, working with Gina Vanelli from like noon to six. And then we'd, we'd go all the way across town to a place in, I think it was in the city of San Fernando called Dawnbreaker at the time, who Seals and Croft studio to oh, work wow. on pages from like six to midnight. This went on for weeks, you know, maybe a month, you know, uh, yeah. it, it, it was like, yeah, back to back sessions. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that was, you know, it, it, and then I stayed home and then I met people and I, you know, somebody recommended me, for something like, you know, to Tom Scott and, you know, and then I got recommended for a TV show and, you know, it, it cut little by little, but then it was enough where I saw that I could, I could work and see, you have to remember back then there was the A team, B team, C team, D team, and E team. Everybody was working, turning yeah. down work, you know, and, yeah. and, and people, musicians who were playing in clubs were buying houses. I mean, I'm heard, serious. I mean, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I know I've heard it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. 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 When you think about it now, like what happened, right? The economy and, you know, union guys used to come in to clubs and, you know, make sure that you had your union card or that, uh, <laughs> you know, the, you know, performing rights organizations would make sure that the clubs, yeah, all that kind of stuff and was being enforced and, and it was just a, uh, yeah. Yeah. Different economy. Yeah. I, 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 I was going to say, and that that's that's an an entirely different conversation we could have maybe another time. But well, we could go on and on, man. Definitely. I, I know. I, I mean, I just think about how prolific your 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 resume or your repertoire or whatever you want to call it. Your 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 recording. Curriculum predict- white hay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and, uh, and pedigree. <laughs> pedigree. Yes. Like a dog. No, I mean, just the eighties, you just, you just exploded with, with so much recording and, and, and I was just thinking, and, I, and before we wrap up, it just, I got to throw this story in here because it involves my dad. But um, when you were pl- doing the Joan Rivers show in the eighties, I used to talk about you and I was living in LA and we had met a couple of times when I was at DW and Simmons, but you did a clinic at pro drum shop and 1987 i want to say the summertime and tim landers played bass with you you guys played together at the old union uh, hall across the street there my dad was in town came with me to the clinic and he was so excited because joan rivers drummer <laughs> was doing a clinic <laughs> but <laughs> oh, that's classic <laughs> it's classic my dad rest his soul we had watched you on tv the night before on friday night oh man and i and i said <sighs> Oh, good. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy we're going to see tomorrow. So, no. he was, and and we, you you met him briefly at, at Pro Drum afterward when Stan would have everybody back at the shop afterward or something. Yeah. You oh. you were really nice and you said hello and, but you know he was just like wow he was he's such a nice guy and wow what a drummer I said yeah oh that's yeah. funny yeah but, he does but, more than Joan Rivers <laughs> wow that yeah. is so funny. We, uh, oh man god bless him man that yeah, is so yeah. funny you know it went on to become arsenio after a while because because right. yeah, yeah. he was like um started doing more and more of the show and and i i was still in there at that time and um and then i left and and uh and so then arsenio 
uh, got his own show. And then there were a bunch of other shows that emerged from that. And it yeah. was interesting because just from that one show, I was starting to get called. Anytime a new show would come on, I would get called. I was like TV man, right? But 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 what happened was like um, on the Joan Rivers thing, I was able to sub it out because, it, you know, I was at that time, I was trying to get more and more session work. And it just happened during the, a time of the day where it was like, I was having to turn down sessions and I thought, yeah. no, yeah. I don't want to do this. You know, this is, mm, there has to be. So, yeah. So yeah, I can see a part that. of it. Mm. Yeah. No, that's great. Vinny, thank you so much for doing this. This is what a, thank what an you, honor. Uh, oh no, it's, it's a pleasure, man. It'd be, it's, you're very, very easy to talk to and you make, make it easy for me to just rattle on and, you know, put a quarter in me. You know. <laughs> I, uh, I just go I, we, and go. We could go all day, but, but again, everybody watching, <laughs> Don't forget to um, subscribe to Vinny's podcast, Breakfast with Vinny. And, uh, and in fact, Vinny, I searched it. I think I went onto my Apple podcast little app and searched it and it came right up. So, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's easy to find. You're, uh, you're easy. Oh, to, yeah. People oh, just need to search oh it good, good. It. Well, well, it's on, it's on Apple and it's on Spotify and its own website and, and Podbean. So, yeah. You know, the thing is, is I encourage people to sign up on, on the website and Podbean because, you know, I don't mind Apple and all that, but, but, uh, you know, it's like, it's easy. It's too hard for me to track, uh, and, and, you know, engage my listeners, uh, you know, when it's spread all over the place. Like, for example, I never sent my RSS feed to Google yet, but it's there. And, yeah, and I'm thinking, yeah. how did that happen? You know, so the way that information just gets spread out is, you know, I, I, I'm starting to feel like it's a little out of control now. So it helps me to be able to see who's, who's doing what. So, okay. That's good to know. I'm going to, when we're done, I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, sign up directly on the website so that you can, yeah, yeah, you can track it. Cause I, I had the same thing. I, I've seen that too, where I got into this, you know, ass backwards, to be honest with you. And I think I sent it. I think I sent the feed to Apple and Spotify, but it's in a bunch of different platforms, like you said. And I don't know how it got there, but it just did. So right, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, because usually, as a podcaster in your dashboard, you have the ability to to decide where you want to send it. And yeah. and mine were specifically checked, and and I hadn't gone to Google yet, but it was there. It was oh, there. so <laughs> ghost in the machine. Anyway, hold them, hold them thing. All right, everybody, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching today. A big hand for my my old buddy, the great Vinny Kaliuta. Thank you, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny, thank All you right. so much for having uh, me on. It was always a pleasure talking to you. Always, likewise, buddy. Love you, brother. Hey, hang on, just Do one it. sec. I'm going to end the 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 stream and then we'll say goodbye. But okay, uh, thanks. <laughs>